All right, uh, first question for Coach Frost, uh, Lincoln Journal star, Parker Gabriel. Hey, Scott, you guys have dealt with a lot of roller coaster activity and ups and downs and uncertainty the past few months. How did you think your team overall handled uh, the, the last week, obviously, with the cancellation and then the, you know, will you or won't you play on Saturday? No, I think well. Um, you know, we had a movie, scary movie night on Halloween, try to keep our guys from going to parties and uh, doing some dumb things. Had a lot of the team show up. Um, I We've officially set a record for most practices with one game under your belt in the history of college football. There's no question about that. Uh, but I think the guys are learning to roll with the punches. Quick follow up. Um, I know that it's a, uh, there's some gray area in the, you know, whether a team's going to play or not. Did you, what do you think of that? And, and, and would it be better if there was just a set red line, you're either playing or you're not based on where your roster is health wise? You know, I've uh, weighed in on my opinion on some of those decisions before, and it hasn't done any good. So I don't think I'll weigh in on my decision on, on their decision on that. Uh, I know they left a, they, they left a provision in there for teams to decide if it wasn't safe uh, in their community or university to play. And that's what our last opponent chose to do. So we're on to the next one. Uh, Brian Christofferson, 24-7 Sports. Hey, Scott, and watching Northwestern um, on film from their first two games, what strikes you as maybe different about them this year compared to last year? What, what stands out when you watch them? Um, you know, I've watched more defense than offense to this point. Uh, you know, they, they kind of whipped us on that side of the ball last year, and they look, they look the same or better this year. So, um, you know, I, obviously their, their offense, I think, so far through th two games is – uh, doing a lot better than they did last year and, and looks to be pretty good to me. Um, but they're always going to be a, a smart, physical, disciplined team on both sides of the ball. And um, defense has been good since I've been in the league. So we'll have our work cut out for us. The Athletic, Mitch Sherman. Hey, Scott. Um, Pat Fitzgerald said today that you guys would have a huge advantage. Um, by having the having the week off while they while they had to play Iowa on Saturday, um, how how do you characterize the pluses and minuses of maybe getting a little extra rest and and what was your adjusted schedule both through the weekend and and the early part of this week with tomorrow being off? Oh, um, <laughs> maybe if this was week seven or eight, having a week off would be nice. We've only played one game, uh, so I don't. I don't know. Pat, Pat's one of the smartest guys in the country, probably, but I, I don't know if I agree with him on that one. Um, we've been doing the best we can. Like I said, I think we've had more practices with one game under our belt than any football team in the history of football. Um, we just want to play. Um, we practiced uh, Saturday, took Sunday off. Practice today, going to take tomorrow off. Going to practice Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, Caleb Henry, KLIN. Coach, you had a uh, what turned out to be a bye week last week off tomorrow. How are you handling controlling intensity in practice with no built in bye weeks over the course of this season compared to how you would handle intensity during a practice week and a game week in previous years? Uh, we're making it up as we go along. <laughs> I'm being honest. Uh, you got to have a feeling for where your team is. Um, played one game and and we're done for two weeks. It's hard. It's hard to predict those things. So we just got to make a daily call and um, keep trying to get our guys better without risking them risking their health too much. Oscar online, Sean Callahan. Hey, coach. Um, how much of your job is just trying to manage the roller coaster of emotions of you know telling your kids. Things are on, things are off, et cetera. I mean, and can you just speak to the challenge of that, um, keeping these kids uh, kind of level-headed through all the ups and downs? Yeah, uh, Sean, to this point, the kids are kind of like I am. They're, they're kind of callous to the whole thing. Um, you know, I told them uh, 
at one point that I think it thought it was going to go to a, you know, we had to scramble to try to find an opponent to, to fill the game. And, um, so we just want to let our kids play and the kids just want to play. Um, not everybody was available. So in about a few hours, we came up with one that was going to be able to PCR that test, test their kids on a Thursday and a Friday and fly here and we could test them again. Um, we told the kids we were going to try, uh, told them it was probably going to go to a vote of the big 10, whether they're going to let us or not. We tried to do it the right way. Um, I don't think they were very confident when they heard that and they were right. Uh, so we didn't get to play. Uh, the, you know, the kids kind of laugh about those things now more than anything. They just want to be on the field competing and, um, hopefully we get a chance through this Saturday. Lincoln Gerald star, Steve Sipple. Hi, Scott. Um, I just wanted to confirm. So Cam Taylor Britton, uh, Deontay Williams will be out in this game. Uh, first half, first half. they're suspended for the first half. Okay. Uh, and is that, I mean, how do you feel about that? Was there any chance that because you guys didn't have a game that they would be able to play? Uh, no, Sip, Sip I've, I've been, I've been through this before. Um, you know, I, we've we've missed games because of hurricanes two years in a row, and a lightning storm, and now coronavirus, and uh, we're kind of old hands at this. But we've had a a kid that was suspended, and then we miss a game, and the suspension carried over to the next game. Um, certainly, don't think that's necessarily fair to these kids, especially. Uh, you know, we're we're down thirty three percent of our original season now. Uh, we're down to eight games if we get total, if we get to play them all. Uh, from here on out so it, it's an awfully big penalty uh considering i thought at the very least those calls were one call at least was cl very close and um it's too bad for the kids that aren't are getting the opportunity to, to play taken away and are going to miss a half on top of that uh, one quick question about northwestern patty fisher three-time all big 10 linebacker how i mean just what does that say about a player that already is, has been an all big 10 player three times. He's impressive. Um, you know, he, he, he just finds a way to make plays. Uh, that's what you gotta say about their whole defense. They're in the right place. Their eyes are good. They all see the ball thrown. They all rally. They tackle well in space. Uh, they're physical up front. Um, they do a great job, the players and the coaches. Uh, he's obviously been the leader of that for a few years now and I'll, I'll be glad when he's out of the league thank you thank you uh andy kendy ketv hey scott uh tomorrow you guys being off election day what do you tell your kids about uh, valuing the moment and uh the message to them for a lot of these kids would be their first time voting in a in a big election like this yeah, I, I just want them to understand what the country's all about and what their rights are. And, um, you know, I, obviously you'd have to be living under a rock to not have heard that a million times uh, this year. But uh, we took a, a straw poll in the meeting this morning and asked, I asked the guys how many guys had voted and how many were going to vote tomorrow. And, um, man, the majority of our team has either already voted or is planning on doing it. So uh, that's what uh, uh, democracy is all about constitutional republic and um i know the guys that aren't from here hopefully cast their votes back home already and uh guys that can vote here probably will tomorrow Dale nebraska martin hers hey coach um i guess with no home game what are some of the challenges that maybe the team's seen with starting the season with two consecutive road games yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, now we want to play, and we want to play in Lincoln. We want to play in front of fans. Uh, you know, it's just not a normal year. Um, but, <laughs> you know, it's kind of Murphy's Law right now, uh, missing a game, missing a home game, all the things that are happening. Uh, I think our kids have a little bit of chip on their shoulder, and um, now I don't know what will happen Saturday. We're playing a really good team, but I know our kids are going to play hard. Omaha World Herald, Sam McEwen. Hey, Scott. Um, I want to revisit that comment you just made. Why, why do you feel like you're – how can you tell your team's kind of 
has a chip on his shoulder and and why uh, you can just tell uh sam they they've wanted to play they see us fighting to try to get them to play uh we've kind of failed at every turn um but they just want to be on the field um you know it i i think uh I, I think they feel like maybe some people are out to get them or have an axe to grind against them a little bit. I th I think they feel like they haven't accomplished everything that they could have accomplished. I think they feel like they've lost some close games that we could have won if we'd have played a little better, a little harder, a little smarter. Um, you know, I think our program is ready to turn a big time corner, uh, but it's tough too if we're given circumstances where we can't get on the field and get better. Um, and uh, I think our kids are just anxious to get back out there and, and try to try to compete to win a game. I know you've only had the one game to kind of gauge that, but you've said a couple times you feel like your team's very close um, to getting around it. What are you seeing in practice and within your culture that, that makes you feel confident that the quality of the play, regardless of the opponent, is, 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 is coming around? Uh, we're doing little things better to win in this league. You got to block, you got to tackle, you got to get open and you got to cover and you got to play smart. Um, the margin of error in this league, there's too many good teams. So the margin of error is real thin. Um, I feel like for two years, we've kind of found ways to, to not win. Even two years up the, uh, ago up in Northwestern, um, I think it was 90 yards to five yards in penalties and we lost turnover battles and, um, you know, had a 15 yard penalty on a last drive where we pinned them on the one and they go down and score and get to overtime and we get another penalty and snap the ball through our quarterbacks. You know, we've just found ways to not win. Uh, you can't do that against a good team like Northwestern, a uh, team that's not going to beat themselves. So, um, yeah, I think just from a maturity standpoint, our kids have turned a corner. I think they're, they're doing the fundamentals things better. Uh, but we got we got to win a game sometime and get confidence and and build on that. Also, Omaha World Herald Evan Bland. Hey Scott, just wanted to uh, ask quick if you guys had added anyone else on to scholarship in the last couple of weeks. No, just the ones that you've heard about so far. Uh, Associated Press Eric Olson. Yes, Scott, I think you, you kind of touched this, uh, touched on this a little bit, but I was just wondering as a coach, you say your team has a chip on its shoulder. Uh, are you ever on guard as a coach to see if, if your guy's spirit is broken, you know, kind of going the other way because of all the kind of the adversity they've gone through just trying to get a season going? I haven't thought about that one time because uh, I just don't, I just don't see it. Um, you know, we get, we get two or three more games canceled. I, I don't know. Uh, but I don't think we have the type of guys that are going to throw their hands up and and give up. Uh, they just want to play, so we're we're trying to let them play. And this this is such a broken, messed up year. You know, I see some college teams that have six or seven games played already. And uh, shoot, my my kids trick or treated on Saturday. I was able to go. That was the one positive out of all this. Uh, but it's November. We played one game. So uh, they just want to play. Uh, one follow up. You said that you have the most practices uh, of any team in college football history with having just one game under your belt. How many practices have you guys had, do you think? We were just talking about that. I'd have to add them up. Uh, and I, did, I don't know the number, but we've been at this a while, uh, particularly in some points when the coaches couldn't be around the players, but they had some captain led. Uh, workouts and things. I, I I have no idea what the total is, but um, that's why it's getting another week to practice. Uh, we we would have rather played a game last week. I have uh, two or three more for Coach uh, Joe Nugent, WWT. Hey Scott, uh, we know turnover is always a, a big thing in the outcome of uh, games. You've said you know a lot about Northwestern's defense. Um, you know, they've also caused seven turnovers in just two games. That's a pretty impressive clip. Um, is there something else at play, or are they doing that based on the fundamentals that you've already spoken about? I think it's both. I think they got really good players, but they uh, they do a good job of having 11 sets of eyes on the football at all times. 
Um, you don't see guys with their backs to the ball. You know, in the Iowa game, they got a couple tip picks, and um, that happens when a lot of guys are watching the football, a lot of guys are rallying to where they need to, they're pursuing well. Uh, so they're going to create turnovers, but they, they capitalize on a lot because of how disciplined they are and how good they are with their eyes um, and their effort. And um seems like it's been that way since I've been watching them. Uh, back to Parker Gabriel, Lincoln Journal Star. Yeah, I know you're playing a bunch of young guys on offense, but with Bryce Bennett and Ethan Piper in particular, what would you like to see? What's sort of the next step for each of them um, from their first time out to their second time out? Just improvement. Uh, I think both played well in their first time out uh, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. A um, little more consistency, uh, you know, finishing plays a little better, but uh, those guys are going to be good players for us for a while around here. And um, some of our young players certainly could have benefited again from a, from a game last week, but um, we'll keep trying to get them experience so we can get better. And last one for coach, Hale Varsity, Derek Peterson. Hey, Scott. Um, you said this a few minutes ago that Northwestern doesn't beat itself. Your players have said the same thing. It seems like that gets said about that team year after year. What do you think it takes to get a program to that point? Is it just like Coach Fitz been there for so long? That's a byproduct of it, or is it something else? Um, it's probably a lot of things. It's good coaching. Um, it's having a veteran team. Uh, it's probably having a lot of smart kids on your team. You know, you can't be you can't be a dummy and get into Northwestern. So. I think the kids that play football there are probably the type of kids every parent wants their daughter to marry, you know, smart, extremely smart kids that are athletic and going to be successful in life. And those kind of kids are probably pretty good at being disciplined and not making a mistake. All right. Thank you, Coach. We'll have a couple players here um, after Coach. Thanks.